Field notes. I just finished the first draft of the show. And it is bad. It's not good. And it's not, it's not not good. I, I shouldn't say that. It's just not good. Uh, I have a long way to go. However, this is a good place to start because I have a framework. Um, I kind of know where I'm going and I finished something which is great because writing is rewriting and performing is gonna be different. And I think there are some parts that are too long and there are things that are parts that are long enough. But I was really thinking as I was doing this, I was thinking about failure um, and feeling like a failure and being a failure. And I, I've talked about this before, but with this show, I don't know how to feel about it because I feel like however it's received, it's going to be good for me, right? Even if it fails, there really isn't anything anybody can do to me now that hasn't been done to me in the media before. Like I went through so many ups and downs and, and, and emotional turmoil and roller coaster to kind of be okay with falling on my face. And what I, what I used to believe was the fact that I didn't get a lot of second chances because of my circumstances that rhymed in my life, right? I am going to give up that belief. And I am doing that because I really do believe that I can be the architect of my own success. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is to prove that I can be the architect of my own success. And I told myself so much stuff when the Jar Jar thing failed, quote unquote. And a lot of it was a big reason why I moved behind the camera, why I started writing and directing and producing and executive producing and putting all my energy behind other people. I told myself this story and the story was like, nobody wants to see me. That may be true. So maybe people don't want to see me. That's okay. I'm going to do this anyway. I realize that I cannot please everybody. I might not be able to please most bodies. And that's something that I've come to terms with. So when it comes to criticizing and critique and all that stuff, I don't really mind if this show doesn't go ballistic, doesn't go gangbusters. I'm, I'm actually kind of really happy if it doesn't, um, if it stays with a nice little in the know audience that appreciates what I have to say and how I have to say it. And they like some jokes and some good stories and you know, I got into this business, I really got into this business to ask an answer for myself, some really deep philosophical questions. And it's a really great business to be philosophical in because you can reach a lot of people with the question, right? It's not necessarily answers to the question, it's just making the question available to people who wanna ask or who, who think about the same thing. And, you know, the question about failure is a big thing to me because everyone talks about failing up and the ability to fail up. But it only seems like there is a certain percentage of people who can do that and actually make it into something viable to sus and, and sustainable, right? Because the thing is, you have to survive out here. And, you know, in the in the way that I chose to survive, which is to be in a constant state of play, there aren't as many options as I wish there were. And you know, so I took a risk. So this whole idea of failing up is, is a faith decision as well as it is um, something to aspire to. You have to believe that you are failing up and what you are doing is failure in a good way to teach you the lessons that you need to hit the next level. That's a very difficult thing to do when a lot of times your fate is wrapped up in things that have very little to do with you. I mean, there are so many things and so many variables that go into putting things together that sometimes you just are not right for it. Right, and that's any job. A lot of it is chemistry between people. A lot of it, a lot of it is who you know, because they can trust you. You know, and I talk. I, this is talked about a lot in Dinner at Lola, the the dinner series that I EP'd and directed. You know, because I'm a big fan of process, and this whole show is come up with the show has been such a process. And it's a process that I've never encountered before. It's a process that I've never done. So it's been incredibly challenging, the process. And this process of like who you are on your team and 
who and how you fit in on that team when you're trying to make something, it's important and it's specific. It's specific to project, it's specific to the people. And success or failure depends on whether or not the message that you're trying to put out there is received and how well it's received. I think we forget that a lot. You know what I mean? I think we are, we think we go a lot on this gut, like I like it, I don't like it kind of thing. Because we like to, like I said in the last field notes, we, we like to get into these tribes. And you know, the funny thing, I was talking to my brother the other day and we were talking about the brain. And my brother is very brainy. And we were talking about the fear part of the brain versus the reason part of the brain. And he said something that I thought was interesting. He's like, the reason part of your brain is like a man riding on the back of an elephant. And the elephant is the fear part of the brain. We gravitate towards it. We move towards it. Emotionally, it, 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 it moves us, right? A lot of times without us even knowing it. So we'll say something is bad and something sucks because we're afraid of being alone. We're afraid of being outliers or outcasts, right? So if somebody goes, oh man, this sucks, all of a sudden the tribe is going to go, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Because we want to be long. We're herd animals. And we don't know what it's doing to ostracize the one person that we're talking about, right? This is Jar Jar in a nutshell, what happened in the movie and to me outside of the movie, right? Everybody tribed up with this, oh, he sucks, he sucks, he sucks, he sucks, he must die, we must kill him, let's end this kid's career. Because they all wanted to point to something that didn't ostracize them in their peer groups. There are a bunch of people who didn't do that. They were the outliers at the time. Now it's a lot more common, um, people who like Jar Jar. But at the time, Jar Jar was considered an, considered an abject failure. Now, let's take away popularity and talk about technology. Every movie with CGI has used the exact same method that ILM and myself and George Lucas came up with for Jar Jar Binks. That is not a failure. That is a success. And I was talking to my director the other day, and he was just like, you know, he's, and he said something that I said years ago. And he said, look, the fact that people hated Jar Jar means you did your job, right? They believed him. That's your job. Your job is to say those words and make a character that people will believe. And then it's up to them to love him or hate him. Now, the hard part came when I, who did my job, couldn't get another job because I wasn't recognized for the job that I did. That's where we are, right? That's what prompted this show. That's why um, I had the psychological and emotional trauma that I had because of that, right? You do a good job and then you can't do another good job because your good job was so good that it was bad. Kind of was just messed up, right? I fell into this trap of thinking that I was over because everybody said I was. I had to recognize that failing up is not exclusive to a class. It's not exclusive to a color. It's not exclusive to a gender, right? It is individual and personal. You can write the bad version, which is the version that I've just finished. It's the bad version. And I have a typewriter on my desk. And in that typewriter, there's a piece of paper and it says, write the bad version. You have to write the bad version. You gotta get it out there. You have to write it. It's going to be bad. Know it. Believe it. You have to write the bad version. You have to do the bad one. You have to. You have to get it out. It is very rare that you write something and it is perfect right out your dome. It's very rare that you say something and it's poignant right off your lips. At some point, it was bad. And then you read it, and then you went back, and then you wrote it again, and it got better. And then you went back and you wrote it again, and it got better. Back and wrote it again, it got better. Better and better and better, 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 until it wasn't great, but it was ready. That's 
the difference. It has to be ready. It doesn't have to be perfect. And here's the thing, man. We write these things, man. We all do these things, whatever we do. And then we get scared that we are going to get criticized by the tribe of, you know, fear brain people because it's not perfect. I love imperfections, whatever perfections are. I love idiosyncrasies. I love the weird stuff, the stuff that people don't look at, stuff that people aren't paying attention to. I like that stuff. I like seeing crooked teeth on an actor. That's me. I don't like watching a period movie where everyone has perfect teeth. I see an actor and he's supposed to be grimy and grungy, some kind of Neanderthal hybrid with a you know protruding forehead. He's got all the makeup in the world and his teeth are perfectly straight and white. Right? I like crooked teeth. I like eyes where one is bigger than the other. I like people who walk with limps. I, I appreciate this stuff because it's human. It's real, you know? It's beautiful to me. Look, I do this stuff. I'm an actor and a writer and a director and a producer and a musician. I'm all these things because I can't not be these things. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried to do other stuff. The other point where I was just like, you know what, forget this all. I'm going to chef school. I bought myself a nice set of knives and I was like, that's it, I'm a cook. Because I like to cook. As soon as I started thinking about what to cook, that creative brain just kicked into high gear. And I started telling stories through food. And I turned down the volume on the acting brain when the Jar Jar thing fell. I turned down the volume on the, on the writing brain when a bunch of stuff that I wrote just didn't get sold on the making brain. This show is actually bringing it kind of back in a big way, and I, and I enjoy it because I'm not afraid to be on stage anymore um, as me. Now, I am at the place where I wrote, I wrote the bad show. I wrote the bad version. I got it out. Now I gotta write another bad one. And I'm gonna keep writing the bad ones until they're ready. And hopefully in a year's time, it'll be ready. Not perfect. Not genius, not brilliant, not any of those things. Just ready and I'm okay with it.